Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we're looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Cookie Run the Board Game. This is a new one from Dev Sisters and Jim Blow. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play and is a competitive game where players are going to be competing throughout the game to build up their kingdoms to get victory points. At the end of the game, the players are going to total up all the victory points they have, and whichever player has the most will be the winner of the game. So in the game itself, you are going to be building up your kingdom. You'll gain coins and aurora pillars, pillars throughout the game that you're going to spend to buy different buildings and landmarks, increasing and improving and upgrading your castle, being able to hire more cookie heroes that will help you fight off the monsters in the bounties, and using your sugar gnomes to move around the land and take actions that will help you gain more resources throughout the game. Once the game is over, you're going to total up all your points, and whoever has the most will be the winner and have the most awesome kingdom around. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the main features of the game, and then also show you a sample turn to give you a good idea how this one plays. If you'd like to check out a full playthrough video, I'll also have a link up in the top corner where you can check that out where I'll be playing through the first, middle, and end few turns to show you more of how the game plays and progresses. Again, to help you decide on whether this is one you want to back on Kickstarter or not. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so I can continue to grow, build, and produce this content. If you want to get notifications anytime I release new videos, give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff. But before getting into the game, I do also want to point out that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are something to change and look a lot better than the final production copy of the game. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. Each player is going to begin the game with their own kingdom tile, and throughout the game the players are going to be building different buildings on here, expanding their kingdom to give them more victory points and to build up their engine. Now throughout the game players are going to be collecting coins and aurora pillars that they can spend to buy buildings. And there are three different types of buildings you're going to run into. Level 1 buildings that will have a cost and a number of victory points and will also either produce different resources during the production phase or give the players one-time benefits, such as this one here that is going to give the player an additional cookie. Then you'll have level two buildings, which are a little bit more powerful and give players additional benefits. And then finally, you're going to have landmark buildings, and these will give players additional victory points at the end of the game if they meet the requirements of that building. For example, this one, you get uh, for every adjacent building, you're going to get an additional victory point. So you want to get that one kind of in the middle of the field and build up around that. Now, players throughout the game are also going to be able to improve their castle. They're going to give them different benefits and also unlock additional sugar gnomes. Now, the sugar gnomes will allow players to take actions during their turn, and by placing them on the different boards, as you're going to see in a minute, you'll take the action on that space you've chosen. Finally, players will start with one cookie, but then throughout the game, they'll be able to gain additional cookies that they can use to improve their battle skills and do more or be able to go after higher level bounties. The second board that players are going to be interacting with throughout the game is the construction board, and this is going to have all the different buildings that players can build throughout the game. This is going to be broken down into different sections, including buildings 1, buildings 2, the cookie castle upgrades, and the landmarks. And throughout the game, players can place their gnomes, sugar gnomes, on these different spots to be able to take an action there and purchase one of the buildings from that section, as long as they have the required resources in order to do so. With level 1 buildings, you'll simply just need coins. With level, building, level 2 buildings, you're going to need coins and the Aurora Pillars. With the landmarks, you're going to need 2 Aurora Pillars and 9 coins. And then with the Cookie Castles, they are going to depend on which level you're building. And those will only be unlocked during certain rounds in the game. So round 4 and on, you'll be able to produce or upgrade your castle to level 2. And round 6 and on, you'll be able to upgrade your castle to level 3, as long as, again, you can spend those costs. And the final board players are going to be interacting with throughout the game is the adventure board. This board is also going to have a number of locations that players can go to by placing a sugar gnome in that location and taking the action of it. So for example, with the train station, you can go here and spend coins to gain a real Aurora pillars. Or the balloon dock will allow you to roll, roll the balloon die and gain the benefits of that. The Seaside Market will let you either go there to gain coins and the first player token, or simply gaining three coins, or more, depending upon the number of players that is playing. Or you can go to today's bounty and go up against a different level monster. Before rolling, you'll select the monster you wish to go after, and then roll the die and add any cookies you have to that to get your overall total. If you meet the requirements of it, you'll defeat that monster and gain the rewards listed on the card, as well as any space you've gone to. 
All right, and the final thing I want to show you is a sample turn action to give you a good idea how this one plays. So I went ahead and played one round just so that I can show you a full round as the in the first round the production phase is skipped. So during each round of the game, the game itself is going to be played over eight rounds. It'll be tracked by the little round tracker up top. During each round it is broken down into three phases. The first phase in each round is the production phase, where each player is going to look at all of their tiles on their board, and any one of them that lists a production, they're going to gain the benefits of that. So for example, with the red player here, the castle is going to give her one coin, and then this other building over here is going to give her two, so she's going to be getting three coins during her production phase for that. On the other side, with the blue player, that player only has the one coin for their castle. Now that the production phase has been handled, we're ready to move into the sugar gnome phase where our sugar gnomes will be deployed out on the board to take actions. So starting with the blue player, as that player has the first player token, he's going to go ahead and start by placing one of his tokens out there. And I am going to, I will go, let's see, what do I want to do here? I'm going to go ahead and... I'm gonna go here and fight a monster. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack this level one over here. I need two, I got a three, more than enough for five, and that'll defeat that monster. And then that's gonna get me three coins plus an additional coin for that location. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give a coin and get a five. Over to the red player to go. Red is going to, let's see what I wanna do here. I'm gonna go up here and spend three coins to gain a pillar. And then it's back over to blue to go. Blue is going to go down here and spend three coins or six coins to pick up this building here, which is going to get him another one of his cookie heroes. So now he's got three. All right, over to the red player to go. Red is going to, how many coins does she have? She has three, six, eight. She's got, she's just short. So she's gonna go here and gain three. And back over to blue to go. Blue is gonna go ahead and come down here and try his luck on this guy. So he needs at least a one on the die to get it. And he got it with a one. So one plus the three heroes is enough to defeat that enemy. So he's going to pick that up. He gains a pillar for that and one coin for the location that he was on. All right, back over to Red to finish off her turn or the round. She's going to go ahead and go here and she's going to pick up this building here. This is going to cost her a pillar and nine coins, which is almost all of what she has. So there's three, six, and nine. So she's only left with two coins, but this is going to be pretty handy for her. All right, that is going to be the end of the sugar gnome phase. So then we're into the organization phase. During this phase, each player will get their sugar gnomes back. Each one of the buildings is going to eliminate their final space and the other ones will slide over and the round marker will move forward one space. From there, then it's going to move into the next round, unless this is the final round, in which case then at that point you're going to total up all the victory points you have on your board and the player that has the most will be the winner. Well, I hope you found this video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there in the comment section. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.